Today is November the 6th, 2018. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State. And today I'm in We Woke Up to speak with Inez Muirhead. And this is part of our Spotlight in Oklahoma project. So thank you for letting me come again. Thank you. Let's uh, learn a little bit about your childhood. Talk about when and where and that sort of thing. Okay, I was born over at Wetumpka. They uh, all came from Arkansas. Uh, their daddy and the uh, uh, you ever find out where you And uh, we lived on a farm. And right I went to right school at room. Friendship School. It was uh, one big building, but they had a petition, you know, to divide it off whenever they needed to, they from the oh, higher oh, grades oh. to the lower grades. And uh, that's where I graduated from that, and then I went to Jaeger. High school, yeah. four years, and graduated over there. And then um, I met Dewey about that time, and um, I was planning on going to college, and he talked me out of it. And so he, um, we got married, and, and he had to go to the service. And uh, then after that, well, I, uh, my sister and I went, went to California yeah, and I worked in the shipyard no, all the lady. time that he the was overseas. When he called and the road told me to, that he was coming home, uh, well, I went back to Oklahoma mm -hmm. and stayed uh, 30 days. And then when he left, I went back to mm -hmm. California and stayed Don't out there until he thought he was going to have to go over to Vietnam. And, he didn't have to go, uh, they bombed him and he didn't have to go. But then he was sent to Amarillo, Texas. And no, so I went to bad. Amarillo and I worked in a dress shop. I was always working uh, there at, uh, in uh, Amarillo until he uh, got his discharge. And we, I had worked and he, uh, I'd save money enough to buy us a car, so we were in style. <laughs> we, you know, could do what we wanted to, and had a little bit of privacy too. So we uh, came to We Woke Well. My sisters, uh, I had two in California, and they kept wanting us to come out there. So we went out there, and he went to work in a, in a, a great. Inside. He worked back the day. He came in and he said, You better get your clothes ready because we're going back to Oklahoma. So we came back to Oklahoma and we uh, rented us a place. Well, we didn't uh, ride, ride off. We had to kind of shop around and wait. And, and we finally rented us a place here and we woke up and he went to work for this um, guy that he had known that was working in the wolf field. So we uh, lived there, and uh, Dad and I had been married about five years, and we never had had a, any babies, so we uh, had went to Oklahoma City to see about adopting us a baby up there. They At that time, they had a big orphanage, you know, and we went to up there and looked around and whenever we got ready to leave, well, they uh, give us papers and stuff for me to bring home. So I had to go to my family doctor to see why, I guess. And, and before I did, well, I got sick and I went to the doctor and they said I had appendicitis. But ended up, it, I guess I was pregnant. So we didn't get a baby that way, <laughs> but uh, Tommy was born, and uh, we lived on in 1610 Tedford Way, and uh, no, not, uh, not Tedford, uh, 16. Uh, what was that street name number? It was on Old Fusky. Oh, Fusky, yeah. 1600. Uh, was it the 1600 block of Old Fusky? Yeah, 1500 block in, on, on, on Old Fusky, and we, and we woke up. And um, Marilyn, I mean, Tommy was born. And then 11 months later, well, I had Marilyn. 
and she was born there. And uh, of course, I was really busy taking care of both of them, and Jerry was uh, working evenings and nights and whenever he could, you know. So, uh, uh, oh, lots of things happened in between, you know, having the babies, and it was really hard for me to to decide that I had to kind of slow down or speed up or something. <laughs> but anyway, we made it, and then uh, they uh, had uh, some new houses built across the street from what was at. And we talked it over and we bought one of the new houses and it was for the veterans, you know. And we lived there for a while and and then uh, uh, he had a chance to go away and work, so he went away and and we sold the house and that's when we went to Cleveland. And uh, it just uh, Hard just you know all that time. But well, did you buy a house in Cleveland? No, uh, we went into a place, and this man and woman they were just took us in like we were family, you know, and we lived there for quite a while. And then that's whenever they, he went to Kansas to work, and we went to Kansas with him and. That's when he's talking about the dog and the birds, you know. And uh, it was uh, kind of hard, you know, the kids had got big enough to go to school and everything. And then whenever they finished working up there, well, they sent him back to, to Harmony, or uh, to Cleveland, where we had lived before. And uh, we rented us a place there again and stayed until, uh, what, what grade were you in when you come from Harmony? About the fifth, fourth? I don't ever remember living in Harmony. Uh, anyway, they was Did we? I thought we always stayed in Cleveland. In Cleveland, yeah. yeah. I, I know that. Daddy bought a brand new 1957 Chevy. Uh-huh. So I was about nine years old then. Nine years old, he bought a new, bought a new car. Well, then we ended up coming back to We Woke Up, and uh, we've been here ever since. And the kids graduated from We Woke Up schools, and Marilyn, she, uh, uh, did you play basketball? I was in the band and cheerleader. Oh, band and cheerleader, yeah. And Tommy, he played football. And of course, it kept us, it kept oh. me busy. He never was hardly home. He was always at work. If he could get, get a, somebody to let him work overtime, you know. And uh, so then they finished high school, and we woke up, and uh, Marilyn. She was going to go to, she wanted to be fix hair, so uh, she met Jim and they got married and she moved to what? We went to, uh, where was it we went? <laughs> when you, Fort, Fort, Leonard, Fort Leonard, Edward, Missouri. Yeah. Fort Leonard Wood. Oh, for three months. For three months. Well, about a, and then yeah, he went and that to, really did bother me because I never had been away from What are they talking about, Marilyn? Where Jim was at. And, and then, then he went to Vietnam. Then he, I came yeah, back home. he had to go to Vietnam. And she came back home and she got to, to a beauty school. And uh, Tommy, he was going to, uh, he had to go and take his physical. But he's always been kind of nervous like you know and and he didn't pass his physical so he went to work in the oil field work some there then that's a friend of ours came to the house and he was a uh, over uh, O G and E O N G 
yeah. supernatural. Uh, and uh, he wanted Tommy to go to work for them. So he went to Tulsa and started working for them. And he worked there for a while, and then they sent him to Stillwater. He worked there for a while, and then they sent him to down to uh, Shawnee. And he stayed the there the rest of the time till he uh, retired. Ken K. Gerald, her name, Joyce. Since he's retired, well, they moved, they, he, they built him up. A she house out at the John. lake. There was uh, Marilyn had Marilyn lived at the lake. We built the lake. And oh, he, was just, he just loved it. But whenever he was in high school, his friend and him were building him a new house. That, oh, uh, yeah. he came, they came by and he said, them, uh, we're gonna, uh, he was going to go with this boy and they was going to work on the house that afternoon, you know. And uh, so I thought they were going to work inside, but they were put. They worked on top on putting shingles on, and they pulled the shirts off, and he got third degree burns. And I, and I ended up having to take him to the doctor. Then I had to. He had to lay on his stomach till for the longest, and they said now that's what's causing a lot of his problems. Uh, with cancer, you know, that he had two places up here. He had, to, they had to go in there, and the. the Get her to tell you where she slept the first night. <laughs> not yet. I haven't got to that. Okay. You already told that. Oh, have you? You have. No, I ain't. You didn't tell. You did the first time. I'll ask her. We're not there yet. Uh, so he just getting over the surgery and they had to take skin off of his back and graft it on to his head up here. But it really looks good and he's going oh. to 28th to have his knee operated on. He's not too happy. <laughs> Something all the time with him. Oh, yeah. and, um, so they both stayed close, close yeah, by? Yeah. He's a, he loves old cars too. He worked on old cars and everything. He, he's a, Does he cook? Oh yeah, she she has a problem with her health and he does a lot of cooking and I think he cleans house and runs a sweeper, all of that good stuff, you know, so. He watched his dad do that? Yeah. Some yeah, of that? yeah, I've never seen him run the sweeper yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he does help with the cooking and uh, he goes and grocery shops. Yeah. And okay. Marilyn and Jim, they grocery shop for us a lot. And um, well, well, when you were thinking you were going to go to college yourself, what were you wanting to be? Fix hair. You wanted to fix hair too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what I had planned on doing whenever. Uh, a time came, you know, and uh, where would you have gone to learn to do that? Well, I imagine uh, they have different places. Shawnee was one of the closer places. Okay. Yeah, I figured Tulsa maybe. Might well, have it could have been, and uh, then uh, everything just kept uh, changing, you know, when uh, we uh, moved back. And bought this house over on, uh, what, what, what did we say? What 1511. 1511. Uh, and that's where the grandkids started being born. And Timmy was the first one. And he, he they'd come and he'd want to stay with us and he'd cry whenever they'd get ready to go. And, He'd cry and hang out the windows and waving by, you know. Well, I, we kept him a lot. And I bought him a car. Uh, it, he could play in, you know, and, and he was going through the house. I don't know if there was even a nail anywhere around. He ran into this nail with his knee. We had to take him to the doctor and have his knee fixed. The other day he showed me, he said, I want you to look, said, I still got that scar on my knee. 
Then uh, we had high chairs for them to sit in and uh, bought a deal for them to talk in, you know, to, has tapes in it. And then uh, went along to him, here come his brother. And then he was, they was all wanting to stay, you know, with us. And then later on, well, Marilyn, she had one, and then she had another one. So that ended the boys for us. We never ended, had the girl till the great granddaughters came along. And we have three grand, great granddaughters, the rest four. of them's born. Four, Mama. Four? Yeah. Four, four, yeah, four great granddaughters. The rest of them's boys, so. Whenever we go anywhere, well, they all, if we drive up here, they all come. They want to help me to the, into the house. I've always been healthy. I don't know what happened to me. But uh, anyway, I, I have this being dizzy in my head, you know, and I fall a lot. I used to. I'm trying to do better now. But I, I fell quite a few times, been in the hospital. And they, I went to the city and they don't know what. They said, well, that just happens among, when you get older. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't think I'm that old yet, I hope. <laughs> but anyway, I, that's my problem right now. That's the reason he has to help me in the kitchen and I have to use my walker all the time. And uh, I fell in the we garage and I up. fell over there and I broke my nose. And you can see up there there's a place on my nose. It's, it's hard to wear my glasses where I'm supposed to. It's still sore. And uh, we just have good times having parties and all of us get together. That's the biggest joy there is. And uh, then I lost all my brothers and sisters, mother and daddy, and that's a sad thing. We, before they all died, well, we'd go down to uh, Turner Falls. They have a place down there, you know. We'd stay for three or four days and cook out and all be together, but uh, pretty soon we lost some more. Then after it just finally got to where nobody was interested in going, you know. Mm -hmm. So we quit that and uh, just have to stay around close to home and the kids all come. Mm -hmm. We uh, mm -hmm. go to church. Or I remember the Church of Christ. Both my kids were baptized Church of Christ. Jim was baptized, Dewey was. And of course, I haven't been getting to go lately on account of my, me being dizzy and you know, I'm falling. And uh, everything's just uh, running along pretty smooth right now. <laughs> Staying busy. Yeah. Well, let's let, let's back up and talk about the house that you grew up in. Can you t describe it for me? Yes. Uh, we lived out on the farm, and uh, they had moved from Arkansas to this place, and Daddy had built this house, and he built a house where they kept their meat in the barn and, uh, and a cellar. We always had a cellar. We have to go to the cellar because of the storms, you know. Sometimes we'd go to the cellar, and it was a log cellar with dirt, you know, fixed in with it, and there'd be a big old black snake to lay in there, you know. And uh, my cousin was living with us, helped Daddy farm, and he, boy, he wouldn't get up close to the wall. He always wanted out in the middle, and that just give us a good chance. We'd just aggravate him to death, uh, say bug or peach at him, you know. And uh, one time we went to the cellar, and when we got b back to the house, well, uh, the barn was kind of north of the house, and and uh, the wind had blew the sheet iron off of the 
uh, opposite of the, uh, out at the barn, and it went through the kitchen, uh, side of the kitchen, and into the uh, bedroom, and the, the sheet iron was underneath the bed whenever we, mm -hmm. and it had made a hole, and the rain had come in, you know, and Mother always had nice feather beds, and the feather bed was all puddled up with water, you know. It was just something all the time, it seemed like, and she was a good cook. She had a real nice kitchen stove, and it had a reservoir on it, and we'd have to put water in there tonight, at night, and it would heat up to wash dishes or whatever that we needed it for. And uh, we one time, evening when we were getting ready to go to church, Daddy always had a wagon and team and he'd put hay in the bottom and then they'd put the quilts on top of it for us to sit on. And I don't know which one was the last one to go out of the house, but when we got back home, well, the, the uh, lamp had been lit and the fire had went down into the bowl and it blew a hole into the the glass and on the lamp and all that coal oil was out in the floor and I said well we were just lucky that it didn't catch on fire mm -hmm. and uh, well, then we had a the kitchen was a real pretty good size and he fixed up big long table and benches uh, on each side for us to sit on. Uh, lots of times uh, we'd eat late and we'd lay our head down on that bench and go on that table and go to sleep. And, uh, How many of there were you around the table? Uh, I had uh, the three sisters then and uh, Counting me, there were three of us. And my sister, she got married and she just lived a little ways from us. And uh, she uh, had uh, a, a, a baby girl. And um, they was, of course, they was always at the house. And he got sick and uh, they took him to the doctor at Wetumpka, and they were doctoring him, but they didn't know what for. And finally, they had to change doctors, and he had appendicitis, and it had ruptured. And, oh, he, well, he liked to die, and he was in Oklahoma City Hospital. And then finally, it just got so bad that it just, you could see his ribs before he passed away, you know. Who was that? Uh, Audrey's husband, oh. first husband, Helen's daddy. Yeah. And uh, so he, he passed away and she moved back in the house with us, her and the little girl. And they lived with us the rest of their life. Uh, mother always taking care of Helen was her name. And when uh, we uh, left and went to California where mother took care of her. She went to school out there. When they'd come in from the evening, well, uh, they'd go to a movie or something. We was all working in the tower, you know. And uh, so then whenever Dewey uh, came home and all of us come back to Oklahoma, well, she still lived with mother and daddy and my sister, she got married then after that. And they lived, uh, oh, not too far from where we lived, but Helen, she always stayed, stayed with mother and daddy. And she was talking the other day and she said, you know, said, I knew grandma better than I did my own mother. And I said, yeah, you were with mother more than you was, uh, her mother, and uh, she went to high school there in Wetumpka, and mother had gotten sick, and uh, well, daddy had passed away. He had leukemia, and, and he passed away, and she was living on with mother, and uh, she went, 
went down at lunchtime to see about mother, you know, she was, and Dewey had a cousin that lived there and she, mother had called her and she had come up. And uh, so it was her heart and Helen, when she came and seen how sick what she was, well, she uh, called the ambulance to take her to the hospital. And she said whenever they went over the railroad track that grandma's teeth turned loose, you know, she had partial, I had a false teeth. And she said grandma died when we went over that railroad track. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, everybody came for the funeral and, and uh, when it was over with, well, she went to, and lived with her mother then for Till she got through high school and she met this boy and, and they went together and finally they got married and they lived there close to Wetumpka and he uh, had a heart attack and he died where she had three children by him and then where she lives now is where she raised the kids. And it's just, uh, she, she's from the sky and she, they, re, they married, but they didn't live together too long. She said he was too bossy. <laughs> so she's still living in the same place over there. And the kids, uh, well, her son, um, he got cancer. It was, a, I guess, a kind of a bone cancer. I forgot what they call it now. But anyway, uh, he had it for six years before he passed away. But anyway, he before he died, he went to, up to uh, um, Oklahoma City and to the, uh, what is it they go for, to have their, body. He donated his body to OU for Oh yeah, for, for he science. donated yeah. his body to OBU and he died. And mm -hmm. she said, oh, that just like to kill me whenever they put him in the ambulance. And see, he's been, he's been dead for quite a while and they, didn't, they never have heard anything, Sorry. anything about vodka. They were going to do. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure they would. I don't. I'm not sure they would. Well, no, they they won't. But they said whenever they get through with him, they will cremate him and bring his body back to the search of the funeral. And uh, she is. She's been. It's been hard for her, you know. And her daughter-in-law, her daughter lived up in Kansas. So she went up there and she's going to move in with them and help with the kids. They've adopted several kids and, uh, you know, Helen said it's just uh, hard when you don't have somebody that, that close to you to be, to be with you, you know. So I call her nearly, not every day, but I just talked to her today, and she comes over. She goes. They sold the church there. And we come to the Church of Christ. They had Daddy had built, and they had help had helped to build it. And when and Mother, uh, his her mother's funeral was the first funeral that they had in the new church after they got it finished, and. Uh, so it's uh, hard. She just—I I try not to even think about it when she's with me, cause I don't want to talk about it if she doesn't want to, because you know it's bad whenever you talk about it and I'm losing. And he was always right there for her if she needed something done, well, all she had to do was call him, you know. And now her son lives down by Duncan, and she told me 
that they, they are drilling at that way. And she said this man came up and wanted to know if she'd sell her land. And she said, well, she hadn't really thought about it. But she said, I, I think if I do, I'd, I'll just move down there by him and that way he can help take care of me. She said, your kids are all getting old, older, you know. And she said, it's not right for them to have to take care of me. So I don't know how that's going to turn out, but anyway, she's kind of excited about it. Yeah. And she's lived out there for, oh, I don't know, a long, long, long time. And uh, so, so the, the name of the grade school you went to first through eighth was Friends, Friend, Friendship. Mm -hmm. Friendship. About how many kids were in your age, your age group? Well, let's see. You know, back then they, uh, they had a, a school for black kids to go to school in. We didn't have, have it segregated. But we had a lot of Indian kids that went to school with us. And uh, in the morning, whenever we would all, they'd leave, that, leave it open, you know, and we'd all sing and the Pledge of Allegiance and before class started. And sometimes, I don't know what I'd do, but sometimes I'd get, I guess, mean. And, and the teacher put me over one of those desks, you know, and used a paddle on me. And I thought, well, I, I'll not have to tell Mama and them or I'll get another with it. But anyway, the, whenever, uh, I guess they were probably 20, maybe, of uh, my age that was school. And then they uh, pull that petition, uh, divide us, and we never would know what they're doing in the other rooms, you know. And uh, then we had an outdoor, uh, we played basketball, and it was an outdoor court. It was some dirt, you know. And then whenever uh, we get good enough where we could go to when they had a tournament, we'd go to Holdenville. And boy, we thought we'd really go into town and get to be on that good floor and get on and play ball, basketball. What was your uniform like? Let's see. I mean, was it short? Uh, was it short? Shorts. Was yeah, it? Shorts, yeah. And, um, uh, the, what, what position did you play? Uh, usually I played uh, in um um, not a guard, but where he, where he gets to bounce the ball and throw it to the, I don't know what it is, been too long ago. That, that's but, okay. Uh, uh, you throw it to the forwards, you know, to front to make a goal. And you didn't do the full court? Yeah, at, it'd be divided. The, the, down this way would be the guards, and then this would be the center, and then this would be the forwards up here. And uh, whenever we threw the ball to them, well, they try to make a goal, you know. But uh, did you do that in high school too? Did yeah, you play? yeah. Whenever I went to over the Acre, well, it was uh, more up to date high school, and and we had a teacher that played the piano, and we go in there and sing, you know, and I liked that part, it was good. And uh, we uh, had, uh, uh, I think we played basketball outside of it in, in, in the summertime, you know, and then uh, when it got cooler, well, we could we'd have something going on on the inside. Well, what was your favorite subject? Oh, let's see, I guess math was. And were you in 4-H or, or yeah, home we, heck or yeah, something? Yeah, we had 4-H club we went to. And we'd go to, get to go to Holdenville whenever they'd have meetings, you know, sometimes. And that was good. Sometimes they would take us in a 
school bus over to, to the, uh, for a movie in the evening, you know. And, uh, uh, what year did you graduate from high school? In 42. 42. Mm -hmm. So right before you got married mm -hmm. then? Yeah, we got married in 42. And did you have a senior trip? Yes, I got picked to somewhere, but I mean, the girls uh, that we went, I can't even remember where we went, man. Um, was it out of state, or was it? No, it was uh, down around um, uh, on the other side of Ada, down into there somewhere. Oh, like uh, Sulphur Springs or yeah, something? Yeah, something like that. And uh, then uh, it... Uh, we went in a school bus, and uh, then, but whenever I had a better time when I went to high school. Did you date much in high school? Oh, uh, this uh, guy that lives in this, uh, let's see, one, two, the third house up this way, he was always a, a set behind me, and he liked to tell jokes, you know. <laughs> and. Uh, he, uh, he would come to friendship when we'd have pie suppers, you know. But I never did care too much about him. I, I, he was just a friend. And, uh, well, for the pie supper that where you where you met Dewey, did you decorate a box? Oh, let's see. Yeah, I think they did. Did they? I didn't. I never did. I never did do that. Uh, my sisters were all older, you know, than me. And they'd fix it up for me, but um, my, the one that lost her husband, she's the one that always made the pies. She could make good pies, pineapple or whatever. And uh, uh, we always had a. They we would go to the school and have the pie supper, and then they would take the money. The men, uh, women, and men would take the money. And uh, they would go and buy candy and nuts and fruit and stuff, sacks, and they would sack it all up. And then we'd have a Christmas party, a uh, Christmas plays, you know. And when we have the Christmas plays and everything, well, after that was over with, well, they'd always hand out the candy and stuff. That was a treat? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It was uh, good. The, the men would always go out and cut a big cedar tree and, and fix it where it would stand up. And the women would decorate it, you know, and put it up on the stage. So we always had a good time. Always, everybody was always good to come out and help buy the pies and stuff. Dear said that what a woman was. They sold for more than that. They, did they bid on them? Uh huh. Did they? Uh huh. We never bid the most. Most is the it would be a girlfriend and boyfriend or a husband and wife or, or just a friend, you know, would bid on them. So, well, who would have bid on yours that night if he hadn't? Do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Some of the folks or some. Well, how how far was the school from your house? Well, we had to walk about a mile, a little over a mile. Uh, and whenever it was cold weather, mother she put long handles on us, you know, or if it was real uh, bad, like raining or snowing, daddy, uh, he'd hook up the horse and mules, the horses, and put them to the wagon, and he'd pick all the kids up going to school, you know. And then in the evening, well, he'd come back and get us, and everybody could ride, you know, that wanted to. <clears throat> and uh, that was when we lived out on the, on the farm, and then we moved up on number nine, and uh, there was still several kids along the way, you know, and he would uh, always, when it was bad, he'd always come and get us, keep us from walking in the rain. <clears throat>
And um, would you wear pants or skirts? Was it mostly dresses at that point? Was yeah, it? Yeah, mother. She made all of our dresses. I said, she, I was telling Marilyn, she made that jacket there before, a long time before she died, and it's been hanging in the closet. Look at him; he's asleep over there. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, she American mother made that jacket for herself, and she wore it. <clears throat> Then when she passed away, <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with me. I got it and brought it over here. I asked Marilyn, would she like to have it? You know, a lot of stuff that uh, I'm trying to give to the kids before anything happens to me. Well, did she teach you how to sew? Uh, well, we did, we did it at school. Yes. We sewed at school. But uh, Mother, she made all of our dresses, and she made one that came down to about this below my waist, and then she put plates all the way around it. You've seen them. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, that was my favorite dress. And, uh, yeah, she she was a good seamstress. Where would she get her fabric? Well, uh, we talked I had this, uh, what was that name, that store, P. Anyway, it was a shoes and had shoes and material and everything in it, you know, that you needed. And uh, certain times of the year when they'd be uh, all go to town and buy up stuff. And, and of course, we just had one pair of shoes, and they were those Buster brand, was it Buster Brands uh, shoes, and we get a pair of shoes. And then she would make her dresses while we get a coat and shoes, and then most of the time and underwear and stuff. But most of the time, she would make her clothes for us. And, uh, and hand-me-downs since you were the baby. Yeah. And well, they were all pretty well, you know, different sizes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She uh, kept us all. I just had the two brothers, but they were older, and they both were married by the time I come along and was old enough to realize what what was going on. You know, were you the last one to get married too? Yeah, of the of the kids. Yeah, I was the last one of the bunch. Did you have a hope chest? I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't need <laughs> gathering stuff to when you got married. No, I wasn't planning on getting married that soon. <laughs> but you ask him. <laughs> so, he so, thinks so, so, so he says. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no. I wasn't ready, and he he just kept on, kept on, kept on, till finally I just give up. <laughs> and that's my problem. I give up too many times. And your dad gave you a cow? Yeah. And, uh, it was, um, that's the one that I sold to buy my wedding dress. Was that something he did for the other sisters, too? I, I imagine Mother, my, she might have made her dresses. I don't know. Mother might have. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can't even remember them hardly getting married. Uh, but anyway, they give us a wedding shower and I got a set of dishes and I kept, I broke, I guess I broke them all but one plate and I don't know, I think I gave it to Marilyn. And I don't know if she still got it or not, but anyway, it's, I guess the last one's different than the others. They all petted me and I, I didn't have to do a lot of things that the other girls did, you know. And so I was spoiled. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Did you have to help with chores or anything? Uh, well, sometimes he uh, would go out, he went out and built uh, boxes for the hens to get in to, to lay. And uh, the, usually they were up too high for me to reach, and my mama, daddy, or some of the older ones would go up there and gather the eggs in. But I'd help with the dishes, and 
uh, we always had uh, different things that we had to do, you know. Um, so uh, either I, I go help wash or dry or put them away or whatever. Then we had to carry water and put in a reservoir, you know, at, on the stove to have water in the house. Carry it from a, a well? Or uh huh. From a well? We had a well. Wow. Yeah, we had chickens and turkeys and uh, hogs and Daddy, he would fix a place kind of like this when they were they were going to maybe kill a hog and put them on it, you know, to fatten them out. And uh, sometimes they'd get mean before, before they'd time to kill them. You couldn't get up, you wasn't supposed to get up close to them where they were at because they'd bite you. And uh, we had, I never did have horses. Uh, Daddy had always had usually two sets of mules. They called them black, uh, Slim and Shorty. I think they were black, but trimmed in white, but they were little, kind of small mules. Then one time he bought some red ones and they were mean. And uh, he uh, had uh, gathered his corn and it was in a, um, a, a kind of a room like, and he had a door on it, you know. And he'd go open that door and get the corn out for them. And one of the more red horses, uh, red mules, laid him in the side. So we had to change. He had to change that up a little bit. But uh, it's uh, the, well, you know, I'm any youngest, I guess. They, I never did have to do a lot of things that the older ones did. Yeah. And, uh, they had your parents trained by the time uh, you got. And whenever I was about, um, I don't know, must have been around 10, well, I had uh, typhoid fever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never, ha I always wanted a doll. And of course, I never did ha have one because they weren't able to buy dolls, you know, at Christmas time, I guess, or whenever. And uh, anyway, they made arrangements somewhere or another to get me a doll. Mm -hmm. And we had an organ, it was kind of like that, but it had places, you know, to put your books and stuff. And they set that doll in, up in that organ for me to look at. And I kept it for a long, long time. And we did, uh, it got so hot, you know, and we didn't have air conditioning and it was had rubber arms and legs and they melted. Mm -hmm. I said, I wish I'd have kept them. Kept it, I could have had them redone. Yep. But then you didn't know anything like that. So you had an organ? Yeah. That's unusual. My too. sister, she played the organ, yeah. It's just younger than me. Mostly yeah. church hymns or any uh, yeah, type of well, music? Well, yeah, and he, she just sat down and they were playing, you know, whatever. And, um, had she had lessons or did she no, just learn, learn just, by ear or whatever? Yeah, just come naturally. She, and uh, then uh, they just... So when when you married and moved to California, your parents moved, or they stayed? Yeah, they, they stayed. Yeah, they lived on the farm up there on Number Nine, and they had an auction and sold everything. And my sister and her husband were li living uh, not too far, so they all came to California together and rented a place, and we all stayed together, you know, and my older sister wanted always, she's always taken care of me now. Whenever, I don't know how old I was, but a mother, whenever we'd go to bed, her and daddy'd go to bed, well, I'd always go to bed with them, and I'd lay in the middle, but if she decided to turn over, well, she'd pick me up and turn me over 
that's the way with her, you know. And um, I, I just slept with them for, gosh, I guess I was probably 11, 10 or 11 years old. And my older sister, not the one that was married, the one that was still at home, she uh, talked to me and got me to start sleeping with her, you know. So I slept with her till she got married. Then my other sister, she, she was a, she was kind of funny. She didn't want you a touch of her or anything, you know. And whenever we go to bed, well, she'd get over on her side and I'd sleep. Well, finally, I just got tired of that. I just sleep by myself, you know. And um, mother and daddy had a, their bedroom. And, then they had another bed in there, the one that my younger sister slept in, and then we had another bedroom, and I slept back there in that bedroom, and then my sister and them, they started, uh, they, uh, whenever she lost her husband, they moved back, you know, so we all started over again, yeah. Oh, it's just uh, one happy family when they, mm -hmm. you know, they all, now my brothers, they were married and moved away before I, I guess before I come along. I can't remember them ever being home. Hmm. And they married and had girls about a little younger than me, you know. And, uh, well, and then when you got married and he went to war and you went to California to work? Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you my, worked. My sister, the one that lost her husband, me and her went out there. Was there someone already there? Yeah, my, my sister, the one that I think she, she talked to me and had me to sleep with her. She was there. Her, her okay. husband had a, um, had rented a place, and we uh, went out there and stayed with him. And I tell you, the, I never ha had you've been used to fleas, but they were fleas in California. Wow. They get on you at night, and um, I didn't like that part. But and anyway, where, where did you work? In the shipyard. How did How did you get that job? Um, we just went and signed up. And huh. It wasn't a, wasn't no trouble to get a job. Uh, she worked, and uh, I worked in the in the yard. Uh, I believe it was yard three, and her and daddy, I think, was yard one, and she was a riveter, and uh, he was a steam fitter. And uh, I, where, where I was at was a, it was a big, big, big room with all of these uh, tools and stuff that men work with. and. Uh, they would come and check them out, you know. Well, that's whenever you'd have to make a ticket. You'd keep one and give him one, and then whenever he'd come back and give you the machine, well, he'd give you the ticket, and you had to carry up the other ticket then. And uh, we did that, that's what I did. And uh, a lot of times those uh, ships that come in, the Navy was on, you know, and uh, they had been uh, shot at and had to be repaired. And you'd see all those sailor boys that'd be coming by, you know, dressed in white. And they had a, <laughs> it was a temptation. <laughs> <laughs> they look sharp, don't they? Yeah, yeah that's what I never did tell you. This one guy, he thought he was going to make me go with it. And I told him, I said, no, I can't go. And he said, we'll go. He said, uh, uh, is this being taped? And I said, well, I'm going to not You better not say, yeah. But anyway, there were re really a lot of them. And then whenever they worked on these ships and they take them to the uh, dock, outfitting dock, well, they would uh, have a ceremony and, and break that champagne on them. Well, we always got to go to that, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, see them. 
and then they move them on out to another dock or more work. Did you have to wear a, a uniform of some kind, or no, no. since you were kind of secretary? Was ever, ever year there's a special rain, raining season out there. It rains every day, every day, every day, every day, night and day. And you had to wear galoshes. You had to have a raincoat. You had to have an umbrella. And uh, that lasted till for a while. Then it quit. So anyway, I worked with some really nice ladies from uh, different states, you know, and got to know them. And so mostly women in your department? Yeah. Mostly? Yeah. How far did you live from where you worked? Oh, I don't, I don't, don't seem like it was very far. Rode the bus? Mm -hmm. I mean, how did you get there? No, I, I think I, I rode with somebody. Okay. I think it was a, <clears throat> some guy and his wife and them. They picked me up, bring me home at night. And then Daddy and Andre, well, they were they were working at a different dock, you know. They were I think they was at one and I was at three, and uh, they had different things for for each one to do, you know. Well, were you were you <clears throat> doing that job when the war was over? Yeah, uh, I could have went ahead and stayed on and worked, but whenever we did. I came home for 30 days. Well, I uh, I rode the bus and come home. And then uh, whenever he left to go back, well, he said, well, he was going to be going to Vietnam. I think it Vietnam or wherever. Anyway, well, I, I went, uh, my, they, they came home with me. My, my mom and daddy and him all came home. And then we went back and stayed till, uh, and then whenever uh, all of that happened uh, in there, well, they sent him to Dallas, I mean, uh, Texas, Camarilla, there at that Army base, air base. He was mostly connected with the airplanes and stuff, and he were, uh, so he called me and I, I went back uh, Amarillo, and uh, he always had me a place to stay before and get there. And I stayed with this older man and woman. And of course, I had a bedroom and a bathroom, but they were real good to me. They would cook and invite me in to eat with them, you know. And uh, I stayed there till he got his uh, discharge, uh, and he had went and bought this car. And, uh, so we loaded it down and one of his friends lived um, at, um, uh, down at Duncan. And oh, yeah. he, he rode with us to Oklahoma City. And then he got on the bus and went on to Duncan and we came on the way back. And that's about the only privacy that we had was in the car, you know. And so we messed around with that until he got uh, there's a man here we woke up uh, that he knew and he helped him get on in the old field. So that's when we bought the little house over there and started living here in town. We've been here ever since. When did you move into this one? In 72. Mm -hmm. They built all of the, this used to just be kind of a swamp place down through here, water and willow trees and stuff, and they come in and cleaned it all out and built all of these houses here. Mm -hmm. And up that way they built houses. And uh, Dewey's sister lived across the street. And her husband was living at that time, and uh, he told Dewey, he said, uh, you, what you ought to do is to show your house over there and, and uh, buy one of these houses they're building, new houses. So I did. I didn't know that he even thought about it. And, and uh, he came in and he said, well, I put our house up for sale down. I went down to the lumber yard 
And of course, I, we knew these people. And uh, she called and she wanted to come and look at it. And I said, well, okay. And I said, I didn't even think about, you know, selling it. I hadn't even planned on it. And so she come, they came and looked at it. Well, God, she wanted to move right in. <laughs> and I said, well, we can't move out till they get this house built, to you know, where we can move in there. So it took a little while to get this one. They was on the inside, and you know, finishing up's always the longest part. And they uh, worked and got it fixed for us to move into. And they bought our house over there, and oh Lord, she thought you thought she was in heaven. She was so excited. <laughs> we go by there, and we had a porch swing out on the front porch. It was cemented, and then it had a porch swing fixed in it. And man, she'd be swinging that porch swing just as high as she could go. And was that the house that you'd, you'd bought with the GI money? GI no, money? Uh -uh. That was the second or third one? No, okay. we, uh, that was across the street. But, okay. Uh, that we bought, well, we bought it, and then after we bought it, well, we, that's whenever he had to, he moved away and went up into Kansas and stuff more. Then when we come back, when we bought this other house, it was a um, teacher's, I think, had lived in it. Well, when you were living in Cleveland and he was working in the oil field, what, was the house actually close to the oil field? No. No. no they always had to drive a long yeah. way. Yeah. So the people around you weren't necessarily wives and of other oil field people? No, uh, they were older, older people. They just... You know, they just kind of take you in and uh, be, be take care of you while they were there. Sometimes he would have to double over and work late or something. But uh, Marilyn and Tommy was in grade school, so they were pretty good size, you know, to be with me. And uh, they always uh, managed to take care of us. <laughs> Well, I know Cleveland's a small place, or, yeah. it, or it is today. You yeah. Know? Well, yeah. Maybe not as small as I think. It's there was a grocery store there. Their names were Cook. Their last names were Cook. Did you know anybody there? Mm -mm. And they had a big grocery store. And we went to, we and me and the kids, we go, went to church always, you know. And you always meet nice people there, you know. And we just, uh, Enjoyed it, and of course, uh, we'd come home whenever we had any time off. We'd come down here and see the folks and go back. I wondered if the kids got exposed to farming early. Uh, early. Yeah, they they were good kids, and they always had a lot of friends. Just, well, Cleveland's bigger. I'm think I was thinking Jennings. Jennings is a small town before you get to yeah, Cleveland. Yeah, right? we went to Jennings, you know, to it's go small. to Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, Cleveland's a little bit bigger. Yeah, it is. They had some pretty good stores there. Had a grocery store, and movie, and filling station. Uh, Bill and Bill and Verena Bill. Uh, let's see what's his last name. Bill and Verena was our friends from church, and they had a grow, uh, had a filling station there, you know. So we always had good good people. So once the kids got out of school, you went to work at a sewing machine at a sewing factory. Uh, no, whenever uh, that was down here, yeah. We, when we moved back to we woke up. They were, uh, I guess, up in uh, probably fifth, sixth, some seven, somewhere. They were always close together. Well, I went to work down here, Big Yank, making jeans. Big Yank? I don't know anything about Big Yank. <laughs> oh, boy, it was a big place uh, here in town. Wow. And uh, we made made jeans, and then they'd change and make something else. And I worked down in the cutting room. And uh, there was uh, 
me and two other women that worked down there. The rest of them were men. Some of them would lay the material, you know. They had, mach had them big machines, put them, that big old material on there, and they would go back and forth and lay it down. And then they had patterns. Uh, they had someone that made the pattern. And uh, they put staple that on there and they cut it out. And if, uh, if it was all the same color, well, we'd just have to tie it up. But if it wasn't, well, we had to put a mark on it, starting at one down to whatever, 48 or whatever. And uh, that way, well, it'd all be the same color, you know. And uh, we had big things about like this of, uh, they were empty, and you'd have to put. We'd have to put the pockets. All the, you'd have to put the white white pockets in with the other pockets that were going to be sewed, you know. And we'd have to push it, take it upstairs, then, and then that's when they'd sew it upstairs. We were we were kind of downstairs, and we'd have to put them on the elevator and take them upstairs. And, Wow, to the a, women. Quite a process. Yeah. And um, they had uh, machines down there that would roll the material up and cut for bands and loop, belt loops and stuff like that. And, and um, it was the uh, only problem that we had was we, it was cement. Mm -hmm. We had, had to stand on that cement all the time and that kind of got to you. But I think that's why my legs is so bad today. How long were you there? Let's say, um, probably the, the big wigs came from Philadelphia, Mississippi, and they would come ever so often. and. Uh, some of them were real nice uh, uh, about looking at you, and some of them would just stand and stare to see what you were doing. And um, then uh, they decided to sell. And I guess I, I worked there, I don't know how many years, uh, probably five or six years. A long time? Yeah, the kids were. Uh, he worked there over 20, didn't he? What did he say? He said over 20. Oh, well, yeah, it was a long time. And then whenever they sold out, well, we had, uh, we had he laid us off. Were you paid by the hour or, mm -hmm. or was it piecemeal? We, uh, we were paid by the hour. A good place to work? Yeah. For, for the most part, except for uh -huh. the concrete floors? Yeah. And at the Christmas time, they were. You know, you've seen those uh, books that they put out at Christmas time with their cakes and stuff in it. Well, they'd always bring us really good cakes, those fruit cakes from down there in Mississippi where they made them. Yeah. And I still get flowers and stuff from, from there. I got one another day from Mississippi. Uh, they have pecan pies and cakes and everything, you know that you buy at Christmas time. So the the label would be Big Yank? On the... On the pant, on the jeans? Uh-huh. Would be Big Yank? Uh-huh. And it had the, had the size on it. And they had uh, big, big boxes that they would put so many in and ship them out. Have, have any idea how many how many you may have made? You made mostly pants or assembled pants. Yeah, they were jeans. 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 Uh huh. I don't know. They've been trying to get it started again. Then they're making uh, what kind of jeans? Is it? What is it they've been making down there at that big ant place? I don't know what they're doing. Well, the closest thing I know so, of is Roundhouse overalls. Well, Roundhouse. Well, they, they was down there, but big ant. Kind of sold out, kind of like Wrangler. I mean, I don't, 
They dipper, was big. dipper but, uh, once has moved in there trying to get started, and but you know I don't uh, keep up with them to see what's what they're doing. But uh, the other day we drove by there, and, and the heat and air conditioning guy was uh, there. I told him, I said there must be something going on in there. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, they didn't know. It's a huge building. And uh, so we, we well, Woka has had a sewing factory off and on for yeah. years. Yeah, and then they had uh, Lee and Russell. They made women clothes. Mm. They Lee made, and Russell and custom size. Uh huh. Custom it's, size was. Lee and Russell and custom size, yeah. I don't know how long they were in We Woka, do you? Long uh -huh. time. Oh. Yeah, long time. Yeah. What's the biggest employer here now? Sonic. Sonic. <laughs> I think maybe the court uh, since the since yeah. the courthouse yeah. is yeah. It's all <laughs> gone to pot. It's, they boarded it up. Now the uh, hotel was a bit two or three story. Two, three in the gym with the basement. Three. Used well, to be an old Aldrich hotel. Somebody has went in there and bought that. Who do you? Who is it? Do you know? Trademark. I don't know. I looked at it today. Uh, that and they've got all the windows and everything. And I saw. They're gonna make apartments now. I saw a sign there that said that we're there. accepting the uh, uh, renters. Uh huh. Occupants. Uh, the uh, first of uh, December, I believe it was. Oh, I don't think they'll be ready by December. I told you, I said, how they going to get in year. there? Because the doors doesn't look like they've, <laughs> they've got the windows all look like that. It used to be an old Aldrich Hotel. Mm -hmm. And it used to have a restaurant in it, and down below was kind of like a, oh. Nightclub. Nightclub type deal. Or you and a beauty it. shop. And wow. when, did the, when did the movie theater go out? Or it looked like it's out anyway. It's been a long time. And it's Seven yeah, it was still in when we was in school. Cause oh, that's yeah. when kids drug made, you know, and it took us an hour to go from this end of town to the other end. And out there we had what you call Morgan's Mug. And they had frosted root beers. So people would go out there. You could get five hamburgers for a dollar. Uh, and then everybody would come back downtown and have their windows down. You could smell the popcorn, you know. When I graduated in 66. I don't know if it was still. But there used to be about, what, five shows in Weewoka? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be one right down by the... And dress shops. And we had oh, yeah. you know, dress, dress shops and shoe shops. Anthony's, Penny's, Allen's, Miles. Uh, down there at the drugstore where I was buying my medicine, they closed the doors up. Did you have a Montgomery Ward? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Montgomery Ward. Mm -hmm. Montgomery Wards. We had Hardware's, and, we had Ben Franklin's. And I see there was, uh, what, three, three or four banks. Yeah. Jewelry so, stores. Hot in place at one, at one point, primarily because yeah. of the oil fields yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. yeah the they would have big places for, for them to live out of town, you know. Out at Dixie Lee, so they yeah, had a big that place. Yeah, was a big uh, camp area. Yeah, place out there for people to rent. And, but uh, what they would bring, bring most of all is the, the dress shops and the shoe shops and, oh gosh. You can't, you'd have to go to the dollar store at the Family Dollar now to buy you a pair of shoes or a dress or something. Or go to Shawnee. Sh well, like that's is that yeah. the closest. I mean, that's, if you had to have one here and here. couldn't go to Shawnee or anywhere, that's, there. you'd have to look there. Is there a great, well, there's an IGA. There's a great I store. probably still store. got clothes that I bought. <laughs> it was yeah. uh, somewhere, somewhere. They show Stopped up. So, what's the population about now? Do you have any Probably idea? Probably around two, maybe between. What is it, Jim? Two, three thousand? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 2,500, 3,000. We have a, a, a lot of 
Okay. That's what we've turned into. Watch it now, you're on camera. I whisper. She can edit me. Oh. Um, I didn't say nothing of it. Her county seat was went the wrong way. Well, I don't know how they're going to ever get that movie house fixed up. Matter of fact, I don't think they ever will. It was the Fox. Key. Fox Keys. Key. 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 Fox yeah. Keys. I tried to get Amazon to come in, but they said it was too small. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't have no rail service. <laughs> didn't have enough airports. <laughs> that's that's true. Um, but it, it has been, uh, we used to go, when they first come out with speakers where you could go get hamburgers and things. Well, me and Mother and some of my friends, we'd go get them. Well, about the time we'd push the button, Mother would get tickled and get to laughing because we was talking to this machine. <laughs> and uh, I guess was there a drive-in? Used to a long time, yeah, out north of town. There used to be mm -hmm. a, yeah. There used to be one have, over at Seminole. Have one in Seminole. Drive, drive in. You know, Holdenville's just right over here. Boone Pickens is home. Did you see that deal they had on TV that showed his ranch down in Texas? Oh yeah, God. I did. They're supposed to come and get it. His oh, ranch? Right. No, uh, oh, his house. They're moving his house from Holdenville up to Stillwater. They did yeah. last year. I watched him move it. But they showed it. I forgot how many buildings he's got on there. The main house and then uh, I don't know what all. He's got 20-something staffers. Well, he doesn't. He looks like he's not. He's pretty old, isn't he? Mm -hmm. well, he looks yeah, like he well, I was wondering if you, all, if, if you cross paths with him while he was younger. Because he'd be I, roughly the same yeah. I'm close to the same age. Well, well no. he's a little bit younger, I guess. But it was, it was something else. His... He look what he's done to the college up there. Yeah. yeah. Got his name on the stadium. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Good things. Yeah, good things, I guess. And you know, over to Holden, the Seminole, they got to the... Whose name is it on that new building they fixed there? His mother, his mother's name's on the library, isn't it? What her name? Uh, something picking to it. Something, I don't remember what, but yeah, I think her name, or his, his aunt or his mother's one is the name on the library. We had, back when all this stuff was wanting to come in, Walmarts and the college and stuff like that, we, our fathers of the town, they didn't want anybody to come in. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to them. Now they're all day and... That you stayed. They've all gone bye bye. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live in town. It's still pretty nice right here where mother and daddy live, but it's a lot of those like first places we lived over on Oak Fusk, it's just pitiful. Well, I tell you, the black people and the white people have ruined the, the towns. Well, just, yeah, they just, don't take care of them, just drugs and. Time, time's changed, don't mm -hmm. they? Yes. Yes, ma'am, it sure has. They just don't, don't have any self-respect. If I'm going to make it to see the next change or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll ask you the same I did him. If you could ask someone for dinner, who would it be? Any, uh, anyone. All my kids. Oh, your family. <laughs> that's that's George that's Strait. Do you like to listen to George Strait? Oh, well, I know I couldn't have George Strait. Or, or Black, well, Black, Blake Shelton? Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, the 14th, they're going to be on TV. They're going to have their... You country. don't want, want Elvis to come see you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Well, do you remember the moonwalk in 1969 when they first stepped on the moon? Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. If you watched it on TV or mm -hmm. what? what? Mm -hmm. TV. We watched the assassination of JFK. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, what they shoot the funeral and the stuff. Funeral. Yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. I saw when they shot him in that convertible. You remember those days? Yeah. yeah. I was in math class in high school when it happened. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You know, they don't think anything about shooting them now, do they? No. Nope. Just uh, 
And then it, since you were wanting to be a beautician, hair hairstyles have changed mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, they don't have much style. No. <laughs> People don't go to the beauty shop once a week and get teased. Yeah, Mother, it. well, she usually does, but now she can keep hers pretty good. So and if she's not feeling good or if it was really cold weather, she wouldn't get out and go. But you, you still go once a week? I was, and yeah, he did. She he, puts her makeup on every morning. Yeah. How, how do you keep it from getting smushed at night? I just lay down and I lay there. I don't Have you got a satin pillowcase? Uh-uh, no. I don't have anything. Uh, my mother would wrap hers in tissue, tissue yes. yeah. and then put a pair of underwear on. Yeah, I was going to say. I, I can remember her doing that a yeah. lot. Yeah. I don't know. Whenever we've I done don't. that when we've taken something off, put a pair of underwear on if you had on a tight collar, you know. Whenever I uh, go to beauty shop, it looks as like this. Yeah. I'm supposed to go tomorrow. When's Thursday? Thursday. Is it naturally curly? No. Uh -uh, I have a perm. You have a perm. This right here is kind of bugging me. It's <laughs> hair that's grown down. Well, it, with your with you, you not you don't do it since you're beauty. Uh, I used to yeah. back back when, and then we got so busy and it's too yeah. much for her to have to do. And she'd come and roll it up in the morning, yeah. and I'd have to wear it rolled well, up. Well, she all used day to come long. on Thursdays after when I was working in the beauty shop from. And I would do her hair. That was a late night. I'd do it Thursday, wouldn't it? And yeah, then, that was too much on there. I didn't have to do that. I was off on Mondays, but my late night, Mother, she would cook supper for us the late night. So, and it's me and better her for and me to go Jim go. and our oldest son were almost asphyxiated. Yeah. And, our house over on 20th Street, something had got underneath it and knocked the vent off from the floor heater. Mm. And we didn't know it. And Jason kept getting sick and he'd pass out and we'd take him to the emergency room. It was just a virus, just a virus. Well, went along after that, Jim got up. I started down the hallway and he passed out. And then I think I got sick, so I called Mother and I said, we're so sick we can't take care of Jason. And so she come over to take care of him and then she got sick, so we figured I fell on the bandits. Environmental then. Yeah. Yeah. We were lucky somebody didn't die. I called the doctor. I told him, I said, Dr. Moore, I said, something's going on out here and I don't know what to do about it. And I told him and he said, well, I don't know, let me think about it. And I no more hung up the phone till he called me back. And he said, can you get out? I said, you've been gassed. I said, well, I don't know. We can try. He said, well, if you can't, I'll send someone out there to help send you. Send the fire department out. Yeah, and uh, so then we started. I said, well, I'll open up the front door, open up the door, and let the fresh air come in. And we gathered up Jason's stuff. Jim just kind of pulled us out on the porch, I think. And then we gathered up and went over to Mother and Daddy's and stayed till we got it fixed. Oh. And I said, oh, God, I went over there and them all dead. I would have died too, right there. Well, the doctor knew something that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a doctor we always used. And I didn't I didn't know anybody to ask, but he came in. And he said, well, I don't know. Let me think about it. Well, he thought, Tommy hung that phone up. He thought about it because he called right back. He said, can you get out? And I, you have been uh, gas, and I said, well, I don't know. I said, we'll try. He said, but if you can't, I'll send somebody out there to help. So we... Well, he knew a little bit more than the doctor that said you had appendicitis when, yeah. you, were, when you were pregnant. <laughs> but you know, I, whenever Marilyn called me, she said, Mother, can you get over here? I said, something's going on, and I don't know what it is. Well, we had to, had to leave our car sitting out in the... The windshield was all frosted over and everything, and I stuck my head out the window of the car and drove over there. Of course, it wasn't too far from the house. And when I walked in, well, I just collapsed and went on the went down on the bed, and then finally I couldn't get up enough, and that's when I called the doctor, and uh, I said, uh, 
Marilyn and uh, Jim were just lucky they didn't get killed. Or Jason, him, he was, well, it had hit him sooner. Well, Jason. Because I don't, I think we had taken him two or three times to the emergency room. Jason was, was a railroad. Mm-mm. He was just about, what, two or three. Yeah, I don't he think was he was that old. Yeah. He was in a bassinet. No, he was walking. No. I know, but when I got over there, he was in that bassinet. I think. Well, okay. <laughs> it's been a while back. <clears throat> Just a little while. Mm -hmm. Well, we've covered a lot. Anything else you want to add? Oh, I don't guess. I don't know. If, if I'm just, not, uh, I will, you know, just proud to be here. <laughs> how do you want to be remembered then? I'm just proud to be here. Uh, I just want to say with my kids, I love every one of them, my grandkids, great grandkids. That's all I live for. And how do you want them to remember you? Sweet, loving grandma. Ainie. Yeah, I'm Ainie. Ainie. Everyone calls her Ainie. Yeah, I'm an Ainie to all of them. Daddy's duty. <laughs> <laughs> duty and Ainie. Yeah, I think duty's had a nap. Mm -hmm. All right then, well, we'll say thank you for sharing. It's been fun. <laughs> well, I hope it helps Lexi Brooke.